Hello. It was first recorded in the world in 1805. 100 years after, in 1905, it found its way across the seashores of Nigeria, in Zungeru, to be precise. And one year after, in 1906, it was also found in Yola. I am talking about cerebrospinal meningitis, which is currently a serious health issue in the country. We consider a place for it on We Can Fire platform tonight. So good evening and welcome to the program. Scientific knowledge of meningitis has increased greatly, indicating that its outbreak occur every 8 to 12 years in different parts of the world and frequently resulting in high attack rates depending largely on the population under attack. But the largest and most frequently recurring outbreaks, WHO says, have been in the semi-arid area of sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria inclusive. In fact, the largest outbreak ever reported in the African meningitis belt region occurred in 1996, WHO reported 152,183 cases with 15,783 deaths. The response by the affected countries exhausted international stock of vaccine. Since its emergence in Nigeria in 1905, the disease has persisted and remaining mostly in the northern part of the country. Just recently, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control confirmed the outbreak of meningitis in some states, namely Sokoto, Katsina, Jigawa, Kebi, Zamfara, Niger, and the FCT. It is not unlikely to spread to other states if adequate measures are not taken. On weekend file tonight, we will do a critical analysis of the extent of the spread of the disease and response action being taken to access vaccination, which is said to be insufficient. There will also be an update on the situation from different parts of the country, especially the affected areas. Thank you for tuning in to your weekend companion. My name is Kirin Umayo. The news always comes first in just a moment. <laughs> The Minister of Finance, Kemi Adosho, says the Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN, is designed to mobilize capital and provide sustainable financing for small and medium enterprises to thrive in the country. Unveiling the managing director of the bank, Tonio Banachi, to the media, the minister assured that the Development Finance Institution, a wholesale bank, will be a low-risk lender to microfinance banks devoid of government interference. Details with Leah Katun Babatunde. Small and medium enterprises have been the bedrock of strong economies, controlling huge employment opportunities across sectors. SMEs is reported to constitute 45% of Nigeria's GDP, but lack of access to credit remains a major drawback to the viability of this very important sector. Kemia Deoshin, the Minister of Finance, says government is building on the foundation it met on ground to see the Development Bank of Nigeria DBN deliver on its mandate and has enjoyed multilateral support aimed at bringing down cost of delivery in SMEs. Is that sector have lower capital, they have higher costs, and yet they're surviving. So if we're able to give them cheaper money, longer term money, better access to money, they can really grow and they are the engine of the economy. The Development Bank is not sector specific and will mobilize capital through equity and reinvestment. With the kind of competition we're going to create within the participating financial institutions, we ensure that the price, eventual pricing to the beneficiaries is going to be very, very, very competitive for them so that they'll be affordable to be able to reach out and then become profitable as they run their businesses. The financial institution seeks to promote sustainable growth, moderate risk and drive revenue generation through the provision of longer tenure credits at attractive rates to the public. In Abuja, Lek Tungbaba Tune, NTA News. Now, as part of new appointments approved for government agencies and parastatals by President Muhammadu Buhari on March 31st, 2017, Mr. Florencio Koka is the new Director General for Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, NTDC, while Mr. Adedayo Thomas is the Executive Director of the National Film and Video Census Board. A statement signed by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity indicates that this corrects the earlier announcement that Mr. Kuka is of the National Film and the Video Census Board. 
Two suspected Boko Haram terrorists who specialize in carrying out a surveillance for the insurgent group around Kareto and Dangalti villages were apprehended by troops of 158th Task Force Battalion of the Brigade of the Nigerian Army. Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sani Kokasheka Osman, in a statement, said preliminary investigation shows that the apprehended spies were on recognized recognizance mission to facilitate possible attack on the communities by Boko Haram terrorists. Similarly, one Bulama Kailani Mohammed Metele from Tombonbera, a confessed Boko Haram terrorist belonging to Maman Nul's uh, faction of the terrorist group under the leadership of Abu Mustafa, apparently tired of the lies by his commander, surrendered himself to troops of 145 Task Force Battalion, 5 Brigade troops at Damsak. It has been confirmed that his, the surrendered suspect, Bulama Kailami Mohammed Metel, was a high-profile terrorist as he is at serial number 253 on the Nigerian Army's wanted Boko Haram terrorist poster produced recently. He is currently undergoing further interrogation. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Toko Buratai, has directed the 8th Division domiciled in Meru in Maidugumari local government area of Brunei State to ensure that the unfortunate attack by Boko Haram remnants on the 15th of March this year does not happen again. He gave the directive while in the area to appraise a mobile clinic on free medical outreach as defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. 2016 reports from UNICEF indicate that there are 400,000 children in the Northeast malnourished and in need of urgent health care. This is as a result of the insurgency that destroyed most of the infrastructure and in the zone. The free medical outreach, a component of the 2017 Chief of Army Staff First Quarter Conference, is aimed at servicing the troops and the civilian population in the area. Addressing troops, the Army Chief urged them to be vigilant and at alert at all times. Uh, the road since its opening uh, has been uh, conveying people to and fro from Meduguri up to Damasak and indeed across to Niger Republic. This, I want to urge the DOC and indeed specifically direct, it, direct him to make sure that the incident of 15th March does not occur. The 2017 first quarter conference commenced on 3rd April 2017 in Meduguri. Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Alumni Association of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies has advocated strengthening of institutions in Nigeria for effective policy implementation. This is the stand of the association's new executive as it is set to kick off its agenda for the nation's development. Isaac Nkuma reports. With the largest pool of intellectuals from all spheres of the nation's workforce, executives of the alumni say their mandate will be effective policy formulation and implementation for both public and private sectors at the national and local government levels. Kicking off its program for the tenure is a policy summit in May to guard against what it describes as policy somersault. The policy summit is going to be on various segments. With the first one, uh, I think it's going to be in May this year, and uh, it's going to be on every quarter by which we'll choose topical things that can help the economy of this country. The alumni say it will also explore areas of collaboration with the Foreign Affairs Ministry in enhancing the nation's foreign policy as regards protection of Nigerians abroad. The new ANI executives were elected into office early March. In Abuja, Isaac Unkuma, NTA News. About 1.8 billion naira refunded to the 2016 Nigerian pilgrims to Saudi Arabia was as a result of a reformation process to checkmate activities of the Nigerian services providing companies domiciled in Saudi Arabia. Chairman National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Ablahi Mokhtar Mohammed, made this known while debunking allegations before the House Committee on Public Petitions. National Assembly correspondent Ablahi Aminu tells us more. 
The allegations on the functions of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria were presented before the House of Representatives by Nigeria Ario Foundation in Saudi Arabia. Part of them are personal interests in the selection process of companies to provide accommodation and catering services, introduction on exorbitant charges, and engagement of a particular bank to take charge of the animal sacrifice for pilgrims instead of the registered agents. We also appeal to the House to call all stakeholders in both Nigeria and Saudi Arabia for a formal interaction. Chairman, National Heart Commission of Nigeria, Abdullahi Mukhtar Mohammed, while debunking the allegations, highlighted the mandate of the commission to regulate, supervise, and oversight companies and agents involved in the Hajj exercise. For us, through this reform, to be able to save Nigerian pilgrims and the Nigerian government, 12.3 million dollars in Medina and 14 million Saudi Riyals in Makana. Certainly the beneficiaries of this will not be happy. We will take the report back. And that's what we think we will do. The commission presented documents to the committee maintaining its stand on the reform which is in the best interest of the Nigerian pilgrims according to the law establishing it from the National Assembly. Abdullah Aminu. NTA News. In pursuit of local content initiative in the science and technology sector, the Ministry of Science and Technology is set to showcase the best of research findings, innovations and inventions by Nigerian universities, research institutes and specialized laboratories. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Bonia Onu told science correspondents that the move is the first step towards developing new templates for technological growth in Nigeria. In areas such as plenary and F sciences, instrument technologies, laboratory and facilities, communications, computing and software development, the challenge lies in the lack of capacity to commercialize research findings, innovations and inventions to provide the desired solutions to human problems. Dr. Bonayon says that now is the time to create enabling environment that can stimulate the interest of investors for the commercialization of indigenous technologies. When you do this, you are going to release tremendous energy that will help uh, in inventing new things that will help in uh, making sure that you improve on what had been done before. So that population is very important and that's why countries with large populations are doing well. The convergence of innovators, inventors and investors has been described by stakeholders as a healthy step towards bringing technology closer to humanity. Professional media practitioners have been strongly advised to cross-check sources of information for authenticity and accuracy uh, before uh, disseminating their messages. Uh, this came up at the workshop on worrying cases of fake news and demands of evolving journalism in the post-truth era by the Association of Communication Scholars and Professionals in Nigeria, North Central Zone. Basi Ita Ibang reports. The issue of fake news and its impacts on the society has created concern in most local and international discourse. Subsequently, professionals and stakeholders in the media industry came together in Abuja to look beyond who should be blamed to finding remedies to fake news publication. Where you have a story that somebody sits down and concords and does not meet any standard of verification, it is fake news. You just say, oh, well, it's fake news, it can continue. At some point, a, a world war could occur because of fake news. It's the fallout of the advance in media and communication technology. So you have a new generation of young people who have to deal with this challenge. Discussants at the forum, including NTA DJ, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, who was represented by Deputy Director News, Ima Okondo, stressed the need for the mainstream journalist to reclaim the dignity of their profession. We must be circumspect of what we do or what we take from them, but to make sure that the public is given what is beneficial to them and what is real. Where are the gatekeepers? Gatekeeping is a very serious function in the media environment. 
They generally advise professionals to always cross-check the source of their information, especially on the social media before sending it out, stressing that once a news item goes viral, damage cause can never be repaired. Basi Taipa, NTA News. Additional 1,500 youths have been engaged by the Nasarawa State Government under its Youth Empowerment Scheme to get them off the streets and reduce youth restiveness. Governor Omaru Tanko Almakora says the youths will be deployed to all local government areas in the state for community services. Joshua Ujito completes the report. Introduced in 2014, the Nasarawa Youth Empowerment Scheme is government's deliberate move to engage youths in meaningful ventures. As so far, 3,000 youths have been employed. In all, 1,500 youths have been trained as traffic marshals, security watchers, and sanitary inspectors. In addition to the three statutory areas, some of the youths will be deployed to supervise and guard public facilities against vendors, as well as report their state of condition to relevant authorities. So far, the youths have been trained in collaboration with other paramilitary agencies in order to equip them with requisite skills and knowledge to discharge their duties. We are being very, very careful in our approach towards providing these services, given the fact that these services are supposed to be complementary to the statutory services that are being rendered by institutions that are constitutionally created to provide security services. In addition to the scheme, the state government also set up skills acquisition centers across the three senatorial districts of the state, while plans are on the way to establish entrepreneurship center in Lafia, in conjunction with the Institute for Technical Education of Singapore. <laughs> in Kefi, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Family is said to be the bedrock of any society. Anything that affects it affects the nation. This was the review of an author, Julie Omoyona, at the launch of one of her books titled Why I Didn't Quit My Marriage. Adebola Brislin Sunday uh, takes it from here. Home is described as a fresh school of life where a child is tutored. And when the home fails to live to expectation, such individual end up exhibiting some questionable personality traits or character flaws. I even attempted committing suicide. The author, Julie Onowiona, who said her marriage was saved by the grace of God, explained that her piece of work in the 151-page book is to save the marriages of others from crumbling. The book reviewer, a licensed marriage counselor, Lawrence Obishaki, and other couples took turn to share their experiences and also encourage themselves on how to ensure stability at home. The Nigerian value is good, north or south, Christian or Muslim. The fear of God, respect for elders, uh, the, 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 the traditions of our people that will come together, we negotiate. It's only losers that quit. Marriage is like a school. You must put in efforts to make sure to make it to work. Julie Onowiana is an author of 13 books. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Uh, you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can also download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Now, cerebral spinal meningitis is a tough disease, experts say. There is a bacterial meningitis, an extremely serious illness that requires immediate treatment, uh, which can of course lead to death if not quickly treated. Then, the viral meningitis, which is more common and less serious. The recent outbreak of the disease in Nigeria has so far recorded about 314 deaths, 1,966 suspected cases, and 109 treated since February. Shortage of vaccine is currently a major challenge as the disease continues to spread with strange strains. Let's take a closer look at the situation in just a moment. This is Weekend File. This is a happy moment for me and for all Nigerians. Amina Ali Nkeke, the first Chibok school girl to be rescued in the renewed onslaught against the Boko Haram. I mean, 
rescue gives us new hope. Federal government has formally received the 21 abducted Chibok girls. These dear daughters of ours have seen the worst that the world has to offer. It is now time for them to experience the best that the world can do for them. The government will sustain the effort until all the remaining girls return safely. Let's pepper Dev. So tell somebody to tell everybody to come join Maya, baby. And they bring too much sauce. No mega music talk. It's gonna be a mad over your tent. You're waiting to win a show. Stop us. I'm your host for the biggest show ever. If you miss the stuff, you're gonna miss everything. So join me, guys. Let's turn up. We'll be storming across Nigeria. I won't be anywhere else. Everybody who is anybody is going to be there. All Nigeria's A-list musicians. One big stage. Live and direct. No mega music tour all over Nigeria. So watch out because we did come. Let's go! It's the Glow Mega Music Tour with your favorite anchors and special guest stars. It's gonna be untamed. Text music and your preferred location to 207. Use 3000 Naira Glow Airtime in one month to stand in line for your free ticket. So what are you waiting for? The Glow Mega Music Tour. Glow Unlimited. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new Geoni M6. Carry out everything on that list. Starting now. with a 5,000 milliampere battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Juni M6, always in power. I register arm for computer school. So that you go submit use computer to write UTME exam. The boy can't play football. No, dear, your big here for not you. To write UTME exam now. You don't need to submit plenty computer. Just submit damn special eight keys way there on top computer. A B C D for to take answer question. P for preview or back. N for next or forward. Double click S for submit. And arrow for return or reverse. And send or form. Not be six months again, no. Now only one month from March. 20 to April 19. No more scratch card. Buy your pin at approved banks and Wakago any approved jam CBT center for registration. Meanwhile, optional mock exam day for April 8. And the main exam will start from May 6, 2017. You sabi any special Wuduguru center where I can put my ticket so that even if you fail, it could pass. Yeah. Look, you better tell your picking now to read well, well, oh, because no wuru wuru plus mago mago for jump again, no. Oh, if you don't read well, well, you go fail. This message is by Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, enhancing academic excellence. Do you crave class? Do you have taste? And do you care about comfort? If you do, then for your next event, a stay away from home. A business trip or a holiday. Visit Jade's Hotel at 24 Undola Crescent, Wuse Zone 5, Abuja. Check out our world class services, exquisite suites, restaurant and bar, gymnasium, spa, and grills, and our outdoor catering services and cuisines. At Jade's, it can only be better. For bookings and reservations, visit us today at 24 Undola Crescent, Wuse Zone 5, Abuja, or visit www.jadeshotels.com. Our email address is info at jadeshotels.com. You can also call us on 09291-9321 or 0810-909-7956. Jade's Hotels, welcome to life. From the south south to the northeast, southeast to the northwest, southwest to the north central, the Future Assured Project and its components 
get involved is restoring hope to millions of Nigerian women and children. We are actually doing a lot on the Future Assured, the program of Her Excellency Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari. And I believe what we are doing so far is impacting positively on the lives of women and children in Nigeria, particularly those in the internally displaced camps across the nation. Get involved. Support the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. And back to tonight's business on Weekend File. With the recent outbreak of cerebral spinal meningitis in some parts of the country, a call has been made to take proactive measures in controlling the spread. Uche Mizu in this report examines efforts towards the curtailment of the disease. Meningitis causes an acute inflammation of the outer layers of the brain and the spinal cord. Its most common symptoms are fever, headache and stiffness of the neck. It really affects all age groups, um, interestingly, even newborns. Findings show that Nigeria lies on the meningitis belt of sub-Sahara Africa, where outbreaks occur regularly. Overcrowding, lack of personal hygiene and environmental sanitation are also contributory factors. The current outbreak, which was first reported in Zamfara in November last year, has since spread to Sokoto, Katsina, Niger and the FCT with death toll hovering around 300. But once the number of herd immunity reaches a low level, there becomes a spike, an increase, and that is what we call the epidemic. This outbreak is considered the worst since 2009, where over 300 lives were lost to the disease. There is fear that the disease could be out of control if refugee camps, prisons, police cells and living quarters are affected as a result of crowding. Medical experts identify vaccination as an effective way of preventing meningitis. Depending on the situation, the pilgrims traveling to other countries where a large number of people will meet, we give them vaccination using a pentavalent antigen vaccine but for the one in country we use a reactive vaccination program against the particular strain that has been picked which in this case is c and we give them a bivalent antigen of a and c the way forward for us to curtail or to prevent this vaccine shortage is to critically and seriously about building local vaccine manufacturing capabilities so that we can overcome this I don't think with the problem that we have now that the government should wait for donor agencies to come and donate vaccines for them. Let's take a proactive uh, measures uh, immediately to bring in these vaccines. A large-scale vaccination program has begun in the affected states. You don't hear about meningitis before? No, I never hear. <laughs> I once experienced it in my village. Why are you still staying here? No. This is where I can only afford accommodation. I used to bring out my mat in the night, I sleep outside. Apart from public health education on the importance of immunizing persons aged 0 to 29, experts include minimizing contacts with infected persons and case reporting on the part of the public as other measures to curtail the disease. Given the magnitude of the recent outbreak, relevant agencies are working together to coordinate response towards containment of the spread of the disease. Uche Nwizu, NTA News. Nigeria is currently dealing with a new strain of meningitis, the type C. But the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Osage Hanire, says there is no cause for alarm as the situation is under control. He also says reports of shortage of vaccine is being taken care of. Dr. Henry was at NTA Benin Network Center where he addressed issues from the outbreak of the disease which is prevalent in the northern part of the country. Agatha Aguare Ojo reports. Statistics released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control indicates that 49 cases of meningitis have been recorded in Niger, 44 in Zamfara, 32 in Katsina, and 19 in Sokoto states.
while Jigawa and the FCT have also recorded five cases each. The federal government says it is the first time Nigeria is dealing with the type C strain and mass immunization will be carried out to curtail it, while response teams from relevant authorities have been dispatched to flashpoints. We have a new strain or relatively uh, rare strain. Uh, up till now we have had the uh, men meningococcal serotype A. We are dealing now with type C. Unfortunately, immunity against one type does not guarantee immunity or protection against the other. So we have to do another mass immunization campaign. On reports of shortage in vaccine, Dr. Ihaniri says it has been sorted out. Two or three days ago, we received a consignment of 500,000 doses, which have been distributed to affected areas. And within the next uh, week or so, we shall get about 823,000 doses coming in from Europe. So the shortage will be a thing of the past. Uh, the reactive vaccination will start within a week. While urging Nigerians to maintain good personal hygiene and good nutrition, he also advised Nigerians to stay away from self-medication. In Benin, Agatha Egwaroju, NTA News. In what is rather an update, cerebr cerebral spinal meningitis has claimed over 100 lives in Sokoto and Zamfara states. Mohamed Nasil has the situation report in the zone. In Sokoto said several local government areas are affected by meningitis where over 500 infected persons were hospitalized in two days with no fewer than 23 mortality rate while many were treated and discharged. It's one of the major things that we debunked as far as this meningitis is concerned is witchcraft. The people should not believe in witchcraft any longer. This meningitis is another variety that is more deadly than the one we knew before, type A. This is type C. It rapidly causes the brain to swell and then form pus within the brain. And within hours, the patient is lost. So come early to the hospital so that we give you your drugs and medicaments, and they are free. Government has deployed medical emergency response teams to all the affected areas with adequate vaccines, which helped in saving over 10,000 lives in addition to massive enlightenment campaign to all the nooks and colonies of the state. In Zampara State, authorities have confirmed rampant cases of new strain of the disease across the 14 local government areas, which claimed no fewer than 86 lives in two months, while more than 590 persons were hospitalized at various health facilities across the state. The severity of the epidemic prompted the state government to constitute meningitis prevention and control committee, which embarked on distribution of vaccines for treatment of victims, a massive enlightenment campaign. We are also in close collaboration with the uh, technical experts that include uh, staff of the Ministry of Health and uh, our development partners. The government of Kevi State has also put in place proactive measures to prevent the outbreak of the disease in the state, as it happened in the neighboring states of Sokoto and Zampara. Farman and Secretary Minister of Health, Dr. Mohamed Atiku Kende, said vaccination against the disease will commence immediately the vaccines requested from the Federal Ministry of Health arrive. In Sokoto, Mohamed Nasser, NTA Weekend Pile. Following the outbreak of uh, cerebral spinal meningitis in some states of the Federation and its uh, uh, consequences on the health sector concern some stakeholders who have called on relevant authorities in Benue State to step up efforts to ensure there is no outbreak at all. Their concerns are coming as daily temperature in Makrudi, the state capital, fluctuates between 38 and 42 degrees Celsius. Blessing Omeche tells us about it. Meningitis is a deadly infection that affects the delicate membranes known as meninges, which covers the brain and spinal cord. It is a viral or bacterial infection and more contagious among people in close contact. Meningitis is a very serious emergency, okay, and it is not something that we waste time about. So the slightest suspicion, go to the nearest hospital, please. Over the years, Benue State has experienced some isolated cases of meningitis, which led to mass vaccination in 2014 at the instance of the federal government against the disease. This timely intervention in no small measure reduced the devastating effects of the disease. 
Director of Public Health at the State Ministry of Health and Human Services, Dr. Tena Ku, says, though the state has not recorded any case of meningitis, the ministry is not resting on its hours as massive enlightenment campaigns are ongoing and reactive vaccines available at the state epidemiological unit. We have also met some health workers to be aware that they need to report such cases, not just manage them, but report as they manage these cases to the Ministry of Health. He further called on other stakeholders to support the ministry so as to redouble efforts in the fight against meningitis and other heat-related illnesses in order to forestall the outbreak of diseases commonly associated with hot weather. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ibuti, NTA News. The Federal Capital Territory FCT Primary Health Care Development Board has begun immunization of 3,000 residents of Dakwa Village, Buari Area Council, in a quick response to the death of two persons from an outbreak of uh, spinal meningitis in the area. Joy Uzo reports that 22-year-old Abigail Tumor and a six-year-old child had died of the disease last week in the area. The deaths of 22-year-old Abigail Tumo and a 6-year-old child from cerebral spinal meningitis this week created anxiety in Dakwa community Buari Area Council, a situation that made concerned authorities to embark on an emergency immunization exercise to curtail the spread of the communicable disease. Executive Secretary of the FCT Primary Health Care Board, Dr. Ruwanu Mohamed, while on a visit, says the two deaths in Dakwa has brought the number of deaths from meningitis to six in the FCT. We are giving 70,000 doses of the vaccine to immunize about 70,000 people in FCT, particularly IDP camps, uh, army barracks, and special population like the index case of Durumi 1, Durumi 2, Durumi 3, we are all vaccinated. The district head of Dakwa Al Hassan Babachukri described the outbreak that claims two lives in his domain as unfortunate and appealed to his subjects to come out in mass for the ongoing vaccination. One child or six years old that died uh, day first day. My rise, the reason I sent to a government to help us out. While on a condolence visit to the family of one of the deceased, the officials gave tips on how to prevent meningitis. They should look out for the symptoms and signs of the disease, being a fever. Uh, irritability, headache, and all those uh, things that might be, and more greatly, stiffness of the neck. Sunday Tumor described the death of his daughter as sad, but the family had taken the incident in good faith. I think the last time government ever stood up to this kind of occasion was during the time of Ebola. And from what my people told me around, Ebola has killed, I mean, this one has killed more people than Ebola. Tumor also commended government for immediate response to check the spread of the disease in FCT and other parts of the country. From Dakwa Community, Buari Area Council of the FCT, I am Joy Uzo, NTA News. Thank you, Joy. Up ahead is the discussion segment with the Director, Center for Disease Control in Nigeria, in just a moment. When the kings of African comedy gather under one roof, there's only one outcome. They will bring down the roof. Come witness the craziest. The what again, sorry? I'm the funniest. No, I'm the funniest. <laughs> the, oh my God! I'm the baddest of them all. Laughter will scatter your brain well, well. <laughs> Come watch the biggest names in African comedy at Glow Laughter Fest. Basket Mouth, Bovi, I Go Die, Cheyi Law, Gordons, Salvador, Osama, Bash, Kenny Black, and many more. You will never have a bigger gathering of jaw-dropping, head-busting, grief-cracking comedians under one roof. To win a free ticket, use 3,000 Naira in a month and text LOL and your preferred location to 240. Glow Laughter Fest. Laugh go kill you now. True, true. true. The largest data network. Glow Unlimited. The Universal Basic Education Board welcome State and FCT Universal Basic Education Board Chairman to the 18th quarterly meeting of UBEC Management with States and FCT Universal Basic Education Boards. The meeting is scheduled to hold as follows. Arrival, Sunday, 2nd April 2017. Meeting days, Monday 3rd to Tuesday, 4th April. Venue, Dover Hotel, 14 Aramira Street, off Obafemi Awolowo Way by Allen Roundabout, Ikeja, Lagos. Time, 10 a.m. 
a.m. Brams Daily. Departure Wednesday, 5th April 2017. The meeting will be declared open by the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu. Education for all is the responsibility of all. Dr. Hamid Bobui, Executive Secretary, UBEC announcer. It's finally here. The most anticipated sports show on live television. Featuring great sports icons from ex-internationals to famed journalists and administrators. It doesn't come bigger than the sports parliament. Be a part of the biggest sports talk show on television. To help chart a successful path for Nigerian sports. 11 p.m. to midnight on Thursday on the NTA. Sports parliament, where the eggheads convert. Nigeria. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. <laughs> Well, thank you for staying with us on Weekend File up to this moment. And joining me now, live in the studio, is Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazo, Director, Nigerian Center for Disease Control. You're welcome to, to the program. Thank you, Kiria. All right. Now, going by information available to okay. you, uh, what is the current situation with respect to the spread of the disease? We have been told about eight states and the SCT. Now, uh, uh, bring us up to speed with the current mm. situation about the spread. Mm. So actually, at the moment, we, we have about 2,524 2, cases, 2,524 cases across the country. Out of that, uh, 131 have been confirmed, and we have 328 deaths. Now, even though there have been sporadic cases in uh, a few states, the five most affected states at the moment are Zamfara, Sokoto, Katsina. Those three states carry the burden of disease. Then we have some in Kebi and uh, Niger states. So really, um, that's where the burden of disease is at the moment, and that's where the focus of our response has been over the last uh, few weeks. Now, what are the possible ways uh, of prevention? What is your mm. advice to Nigerians, especially mm. uh, those uh, living in uh, mm. uh, high-density areas? Mm. So uh, men uh, bacterial meningitis, which is what we're worried about, is spread to through person-to-person -person contact. You know, it's actually a bacterium that many of us carry in our respiratory um, systems. If you take uh, swabs from many of our mouths, you find them in our nasal pharynges. Now, for some reason, in some people, that bacteria can get into the bloodstream and cause uh, meningitis. So we prevent spread by, you know, all the basic public health principles we teach, uh, personal hygiene, which means washing your hands, uh, especially when you're around someone that is coughing or you are coughing yourself or sneezing. Um, you know, overcrowding, we say avoid overcrowding, but we know it's very difficult in some of our contexts. So we say if, if, your v, if your house is overcrowded or where you're sleeping, please open the windows regularly, um, ensure it's fairly well ventilated. And, and so that's about prevention. But critically, at this stage, when there is an outbreak, uh, the key thing is that two key symptoms of cerebral spinal meningitis that we must all be aware of. One is neck stiffness. There are very few other diseases that uh, present like that with stiffness of the neck. The other one is an acute sensitivity to sunlight. So if your child cannot stand, you know, a normal child no longer can go outside in the sun and is very sensitive to sunlight. In addition to that, has fever and is weak. Uh, please start thinking about meningitis. Kieran, the last point here is Meningitis is unlike Ebola. There is a treatment available. But the key thing is that you have to get into a healthcare facility as soon as possible. So really, our point and what we've been telling Nigerians, whether it's Lhasa or meningitis, that the era of self-medication really is over. If you're ill, go to your hospital. Treatment is available and will be provided for you.
Now, is it really true that yeah. uh, the current uh, meningitis in the country mm. came with a different strain yeah. other than what we used to yeah. have yeah. You know, in the past? Yeah. So what kind of strain are we talking about here? So this is a very important question. We have a new strain. It's not new in science, but it's new in terms of the emergence in Nigeria, so, uh, meningitis C. Now, the commonly circulating strain over many years was uh, MEN A. Now, there was a very successful max vaccination campaign three, four years ago that has more or less eradicated that strain. So what we've seen now is a replacement by MEN C. There are about 12 uh, serial groups of meningitis, bacterial meningitis altogether, of which six are common. Now, Kirian, um, the key thing with C is it, there is a vaccine available, but it's not available globally in enough amounts for us to use preventively. There are 5 million doses acquired by WHO globally, and of which now we've asked for 500,000 for this for Zamfara State. So in addition to all the work that we're doing uh, locally in Nigeria, uh, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control is going to make a very strong case to vaccine manufacturers globally that, listen, uh, this is probably the tip of the iceberg. If we don't advocate aggressively for availability of vaccines um, in Africa for the next few years, we will have even bigger outbreaks. Now, still on the vaccine yeah. aspect of this uh, conversation, is it possible for Nigeria to, of course, begin to manufacture this mm. kind of vaccine? Or is it so, uh, mm. is it a rocket uh, science kind of thing <laughs> that we can't do that? Why are we relying so much, yeah. so much mm. On, on, mm. On, on Europe for such things? Because we've mm. had in the past mm. Uh, that uh, mm. there is shortage of vaccine mm. with respect to the, mm. the current uh, mm. outbreak in Nigeria. Now we have <laughs> to order. The minister just told us <laughs> from Benin <laughs> that uh, mm. we've ordered some mm. thousands mm. of doses mm. and, and, and what mm. have you. So mm. why do we have to wait? Yeah. Here, vaccine manufacture is a very complicated process. Uh, we can't do it. Most, no country manufacture, very few countries manufacture vaccines in the public sector. All these are pri private sector driven industries, the vaccine producers. Uh, India a country that we aspire to in se several ways has a multiplicity of uh, vaccine production firms, but they're all in the private sector. So I, I, I honestly, I think it's an emotionally very uh, interesting topic. I would not recommend Nigeria as a public enterprise to go into vaccine manufacture from the side of government. I think what we need to go into is incentivize the private sector to really start uh, exploring opportunities for vaccine production. However, Kieran, in this particular case, there are only two companies that have the expertise to produce men C vaccines, meningitis C globally. globally. Uh, meningitis C vaccines at the moment are extremely expensive, 30 to 50 dollars per dose. So I think there's a lot of work for an expert organization like the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and our partners, uh, Nigeria National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, with the support of the minister, to really be vocal. Uh, in demanding from the global community that, listen, we have to ramp up our advocacy to make vaccines available for Africa. All right. Uh, since the emergence of mm. uh, meningitis in Nigeria in 1905, yeah. mm. it, it's usually, it, it hits mm. uh, you know, the north. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The, the first was yeah. Uh, yeah. in Zungiri, which is yeah. somewhere yeah. in Niger State, yeah. and the next one was mm. in Yola. Mm. So why is it uh, something mm. to do with climate? Absolutely. It has something to do, everything to do with climate. You know, northern Nigeria is part of a strip we call the meningitis belt across West Africa and into Central Africa, where the climatic conditions, the heat, the dust, are perfect conditions for the transmission of this uh, bacteria. So um, it's not really the geography, but the climate. And this enables transmission to happen. Uh, but again, we can stop this to some extent by the preventive measures we spoke about. But largely, uh, what we need to really drive towards is to have access to the vaccines. Thank you at this point. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Dr. Ihekwazi, for being part of uh, Weekend Power yeah, this okay. evening. Always a pleasure. Yes, it, uh, we appreciate it. Now, I've been speaking with uh, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazi, Director, Nigerian Center for Disease control on we can file we can file continues very shortly national agency for food and drug administration and control navdac is working to ensure access to safe good quality essential medicines with the world health organization pre-qualification of made in nigeria pharmaceutical products stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of navdac laws national 
regional and international collaborations, cutting edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NASDAQ impacts upon everything we do, including water we drink, the food we eat. They are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefits and success that they need to record. Let us support NAFDAQ to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. Okay, sir. You may now go in for your interview. Thank you. Ah, my shoe. And to think I just bought this very expensive foreign shoe two months ago. So sorry about your shoes. This is why I advise my friends to always patronize made in Nigeria products. See this shoe? It's made in Nigeria. And I've had it for two years. And it's still as good as the day I bought it. Made in Nigeria products are good quality. And stringent government regulations and certification now mean that goods made in Nigeria meet international standards. Make the patriotic choice today. Buy right. Buy made in Nigeria. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Sports now. The Queen's Barton Relay team for next year's Gold Commonwealth Games arrives Lagos as the Boxing Hall of Fame moves to Adokuta. These and more in our sports update with Henry Ifium.